Good evening, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome. I see you guys are now coming in. <laughs> All right, so that's good, that's good. Can everyone see my screen? Is it my clock that's fast or are you guys late? <laughs> Let me know if you can see my screen. I see some yeses are coming in. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. All right. <laughs> Grace says late and your clock is fast. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> I'll have to slow that clock down. <laughs> okay, so. This evening's class is basically how to find the volatility in the market using the economic calendar. Now, I'm sure, I'm pretty sure that this is the first time that you guys are hearing anything like this, okay? So this is basically a technique for finding volatility that I would safely say that is unknown by many. Most traders are looking at the uh, economic news event itself. So what do you look for to find volatility in the market? Someone tell me, what do you look for? Do you even trade volatility in the market? What, what uh, trading style do you have? Do you trade the ranges? You try to stay inside the range. Are you looking for the pulses in the market, which is high volatility? What are you looking for? Grace says, no, don't know much. Okay, no problem. I see you guys are coming in slowly. Wonderful. So tell me, what do you look for in the market as it relates to volatility? What do you look for? Sandrika says, still new. Okay, okay. Who here has a little bit of experience? What do you look for in the market for volatility? Are you one of those who like trading the news? Okay, Grace says engulfing candle. That's good, I like that. Samantha says high impact news. Okay, that's good, I like that as well. All right, well, I'll show you something a little bit different. It does um, relate to high impact news events. Yes, it does relate to high impact news events, but we're not looking at the time. We're not looking to find the volatility exactly at the time of the news event. Okay. I see we just had Andy join us. Andy, can you hear me? What we're basically um, discussing is how to find volatility in the market. Um, what do you use to find volatility in the market, Andy? Not sure if Andy is in a position to type, but give him a few seconds. All right, we'll come back to Andy. Okay, so let's try to jump into our class. So this evening's class is not, um, okay, I see Andy says he uses my Forex factory, but how do you use your economic calendar? I know you use the economic calendar, but how do you find the volatility in the market? What are you looking for exactly? I look forward to Andy's answer. So in the meantime, I'm gonna continue. So you guys can see that I have my investing.com economic calendar on my screen, okay? and. Why do I have it up? I have it up because we're going to use the economic calendar to find where the volatility is in the market. Let me know, guys, what times do you start trading on a daily basis? What times do you look forward to getting into the market? Let me know, guys. Samantha says opening bell. 
What time's the opening bell for you? <laughs> Grace says morning. Grace, what time in the mornings for you? Sandrika says 6 a.m. Okay. Samantha says 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. Okay. Anyone else? Uh, L. Grace says uh, 7 and 10. Not bad. Okay. It's good. Okay. Andy says 6 a.m. These answers are not bad at all. These are all good answers. And I think I'm going to surprise you guys today. Okay. So we got our economic calendar up here. Okay. And what we're going to look, give me a date. Just give me a date. Any random date. Doesn't matter when. Okay, just give me a date. We'll start from there. Okay, someone give me a date. Uh, August 4th. Uh, give me a date further away. This is a bit close. We can use that, but it's a bit close. I want a date that's far. Okay. I don't want you guys thinking that I prepared for this. <laughs> I like doing my classes with just random information. Okay, just start from anywhere, any chart. That's how I like to deal with it. Okay. So, one second. So, let's get into it. So, I see some dates coming in here. We have uh, July 17th, we have June 20th, we have April 5th. Okay, we'll start with. April 5th. Why? Because this one is further away. Okay. So here we go to the economic calendar. Let's go to April 5th, Monday. Okay. We'll start from April 5th and we can take it all the way back to today. Okay, so we're starting April 5th. Now, I'm going to use the euro dollar US dollar as an example. Okay, so I'm going to use the euro dollar US dollar as an example. We're looking at the European session. Most of us are from the European session and the US session, right? So we're going to use the uh, instruments from the European session and the US session. So Euro US dollar would make for a great example. Okay. Now you can see here that we have some holidays, right? We have uh, no holidays in the US and we have a few countries from Europe that have holidays, but not all of them. Okay. So that's okay. Now, what we're looking for is high volatility news events. On days when we don't have any, okay, today we have a, a high volatility news event. It's coming out at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Okay. The European session basically starts between 2 and 3 a.m. Eastern Standard, right? We have lunchtime between 5 a.m. and 6 a.m. Eastern Standard. And then... We have the open of the US session between 8 and 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. We have lunchtime in the US session between 12 and 1 p.m. Eastern Standard. And then we have the close of the US session at around 4 to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard. Okay? These are the times that we generally would pay attention. However, we want to be out of the market by 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. Why? Because at that time, the volatility generally dies off in the market. It goes into consolidation. Basically, most times, and it goes into consolidation until around 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. So there is nothing really that happens in that time. It mainly just ranges. Okay? Great. So we have a high impact news event at 10 p.m., sorry, 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. And we're going to start 
looking for volatility in the market whenever we have a high impact news event coming in after 8 a.m we're going to start at 5 a.m eastern standard so we're going to start looking for volatility around 5 a.m eastern standard so we can actually use our economic calendar to let us know around what time to get ready to trade so some of us are getting up every day at 2 a.m 3 a.m you know looking to get into the market whereas we could just use the economic calendar and get up sometimes at a later time okay so anytime you have a high impact news event coming out after 8 a.m eastern standard you're going to start looking for a move in the market from 5 a.m eastern standard okay make sure you take your notes guys from 5 a.m eastern standard if you have a high impact news event coming in before 8 a.m eastern standard you're going to start looking for your volatility to come into the market at around 2 a.m eastern standard okay so around the open of the european session all right if you have high impact news events coming in after 12 p.m eastern standard you're going to look for your volatility coming into the market around 8 a.m eastern standard all right now how long can you expect that volatility to last volatility coming in between 2 a.m eastern standard and 8 a.m eastern standard sorry 2 a.m and 5 a.m eastern standard will will be expected to last until 12 p.m eastern standard okay volatility coming in at around 8 a.m eastern standard is expected to last around 12 to 4 p.m eastern standard okay so keep that in mind okay guys here we have an example where we have a high impact news event coming out of the us at 10 a.m eastern standard let's go to our chart let's go to euro usd So here we are on the euro us dollar uh, let's try to use a different instrument here a different pair um uh sorry a different uh, feed okay let me just try to get one that doesn't have any markups on it okay we'll use this one okay so here we are let's look for our april 4th April 5th, sorry. And we generally want to look at the one hour time frame. Okay. So we want to, when we're day trading, this method is designed for day trading. Okay. And when we're day trading, we want to look at the one hour time frame. Let's do this again. Okay. So April 5th, here we are. Look at this, okay? Remember I said we're looking for volatility to come into the market around 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. I'm just gonna drop a vertical line at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard, there it is. So you see this? This is 5 a.m. Eastern Standard and we'll look what happened between five and six right this is the european session lunchtime look what happened the market just made an explosive move up and when did that volatility die off around 12 p.m eastern standard have you guys seen anything like this before 
Let me know in the chat box. Have you seen anything like this before? Samantha says no. Char says not at all. <laughs> all right. Okay, so this, I am absolutely sure that this is very new information to many people. Even seasoned traders have not heard about this before. So this is brand new information that is coming to you guys, okay? And I, I would hope that this would help to transform your trading. Where he says, awesome, <laughs> wonderful. All right, and he says, thank you, you're, you're most welcome. Okay, so this is just one example. We have volatility coming in here. Now, if you understand the Elliott wave theory, it can help you to make a decision as to what direction to expect that volatility to go. So here you can see we have a corrective wave. One, two, three. As you can see here, it's one, two, three. This is a buy setup. So this is telling us to look to go long. So if you're looking to go long, you enter around this point on the close of this candle. This is the five to six a.m. candle. So you enter on the close of the five to six a.m. candle. Okay, the candle is red, but you're looking to go long. All right, so you're looking to go long. The next candle, you're looking to enter long. Why? We can use many different uh, techniques. We have market geometry, which we can use, measure the first impulse, project it on the second. And we know that, okay, this wave has ended around this area or will end around this area. So we're looking to go long, okay? So you enter long, the market explodes to the upside because this is one, two, three, correction and impulse, okay? Let's look at another day. Let's look at, uh, let's see, Tuesday. So we have Tuesday, what do we have here? Another news event coming in at 10 a.m. We have nothing before 8 a.m. Eastern Standard, right? So no reason to start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. So this one came in at um, 10 a.m. We have another one coming in at 12, right? We have nothing after 12. So this is telling us we need to get into the market around 5 to 6 a.m. Eastern Standard. So at, our, at that time, we want to be ready because the big moves come, okay? So let's look at the six. And let me drop another vertical line. Mark the six. Okay, up to six. Five. Good. So there you go. Let me see here. I see Grace says uh, you are looking at 5 a.m. or 10 a.m. because of the time zone difference. Um, I'm not looking at it. I don't have a time zone difference. Um, this is Eastern Standard Time that I'm in. This is Eastern Standard Time. And so I'm looking at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. The economic calendar that I'm looking at is also in Eastern Standard Time. See this, minus four, Eastern Standard Time. Okay, wonderful. Okay. So here you can see, we have another burst of volatility. Now, if you understand the patterns, I mean, it's easy, you simply come, you outline your patterns, you draw your trend lines, and you're able to identify what potential pattern you're looking at. So you can see here that the market is correcting basically from around 12, right? So from around 12 p.m. Eastern Standard to around um, two or five 
or 8 a.m. Eastern Standard. That's where the consolidation or correction is happening. So all you need to do is be able to identify what corrective formation you're looking at to give you a, an idea of what direction you should trade. Okay, so we know the volatility is coming in at this time, which is 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. This is where you want to prepare yourself to get into the market, right? So we're in a, this is a bullish pattern telling us to look for the buys. So we're looking to go long. So you look to enter long. This was your first impulse up. You got this nice big green candle. This is your correction. You're looking to jump in on that correction. You can use Fibonacci since you know that this is the impulse and this is the correction. You can use Fibonacci to help you get involved. So you're looking at your Fibonacci levels and you're looking to see which level you're going to look to pull the trigger at. Your stop will be going below this impulse. Right, so your stop goes at the low, right? So, so again, this is where the volatility came into the market. That is where you are looking to get involved, okay? Now, let's take a look at the economic calendar again. Let's see if we have another day that gives us another time. We have the seventh. Uh, let's see here, the seventh. It's 1030 again. Ah, here we have one coming in after 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. Now, once we have high impact news events coming in after um, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, we're going to use eight o'clock, right? So we're going to use eight o'clock to look for our volatility. So this was the seventh, right? Just confirming, yes, April 7th. And we had a high, a high impact news event, which is FOMC meeting minutes coming in at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard. So we are going to look for volatility coming into the market at around 8 a.m. Eastern Standard. So on the 7th, we're looking at 8. Let me just. eight seven. Good, so this is eight, right? So we're looking at eight a.m. Eastern Standard, right? So this is eight o'clock. So around eight o'clock, we're looking for that volatility to come into the market, right? So here you can see that the price was making its move up. If you understand the Elliott wave theory, you would know that you had one, two, three, four, and this is potentially wave five that you're getting here. So all you would need to do is understand what, um, how this wave is constructed. This one wave five ended up here. So you know that on the completion of this wave five, you're looking to get into the market, right? Now, as you can see, we did get some volatility coming to the downside. It was not as much, but we did get some volatility. It's a nice, clean impulse. And that's what we're looking for in the market. We don't really want to trade inside of the corrections. We don't want to trade inside of this. We want to trade these, right? And to trade those, we need to understand when they're going to happen. We may not be able to catch them exactly on the spot, but we at least need to understand around what area they're going to come. And if we are able to find that, we will be able to catch a nice move. Okay, we have many techniques that will help you to, to try to pinpoint, you know, when these waves are going to be complete, so that we can take action. So if this one is a, a wave five, we need to understand the wave count inside of this. Right, and wave five can take on the shape of a diagonal. Wave five can uh, be a truncated wave. It can be an extended wave. So we just simply need to understand what we're looking at with this wave five. It looks to me like we may be getting something that looks like, uh, let's see, one, this is two, this is, okay. 
one, two, three, four, five. So this, this looks like it was potentially a wave five ending in this area. However, wave five can also be three waves, right? So this is one, this is two, this is three. So wave five came in three waves, which is a uh, WXY, right? So give us five, three, three, right? We know normally we get that combination three, three, five. This one is five, the five came first. So we have five, three, three, okay? So this completed our wave five to the upside. So we have a nice impulsive wave. Then we got this nice move to the downside. So we simply just need to be able to find out where that um, volatility will be coming in. And we would have been able to position ourselves around the right area. So you're not going to be getting involved in the market too early. You're not going to be getting involved too late. You're going to be getting involved just around the right time. For those who like using support and resistance, you can do that as well, right? So if you're using support and resistance, let us see here how that can help you, right? So this is our horizontal line. Um, if we're going to look for support and resistance, let's see. This looks like a nice area for support and resistance, right? So we have support, support, resistance, resistance, support, resistance, resistance, support. Yeah, so we'll, we'll work with that. Okay, so we got some good areas here of support and resistance. And as you can see, this is one of those areas that the price respected. So we could have been looking at that area to go short. Okay, so this could have been our treatment. I know a lot of you guys are support and resistance traders, and this would be a great method for you to use. Okay, if you're looking at your support and resistance levels, it would help to simplify your trading a great deal. If the price is moving into your resistance, you're looking to sell. If it's moving into your support, you're looking to buy, okay? All right, so let us go back to our economic calendar. Let's look for another setup. We have April 8th, right? So what do we have April 8th? Do we have any good? So we have some high impact news coming in before eight o'clock for the Euro. Right, and this is coming in at 7.30. So can someone tell me what time I'm gonna be looking at getting into the market? What time would I be looking at getting into the market? Grace says 5 a.m. No, I won't be looking at 5 a.m. Anyone else? And that's L Grace, we have two Graces here. <laughs> Um, Samantha says 2 a.m. Sandrika says 2 a.m. That is correct. El Grace says, oh, yes, 2 a.m. That is also correct. Wonderful, wonderful. So we're looking at 2 a.m. on the 8th. Do we have anything coming in after 12? No, we have 12 um, p.m. as well. So we have two, uh, we have 7.30 and we have 12. If it came, if we had a high impact news event coming in after 12, we would have to use eight, right? But we don't have anything coming in after 12. So we're gonna use 2 a.m., right? So 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, let us see on the eighth. Good. So on the 8th at 2 a.m., here you can see price was moving up. If you're using support and resistance, if you're using the Elliott wave theory, then you would be able to maneuver yourself in a situation like this. If you're using Elliott wave theory, you would be able to identify this. this area right here. And you can say that this is correction. 
right? Because we have a double bottom. So this is one, this is two, this is three. So this is a flat, right? The other flat is uh, three, three, five. Okay, so this is the flat, and this would be what we call an ex, uh, a running flat. Um, if it broke the bottom or retested the bottom in this case, it could be an expanded flat, right? So this is one of those flat variation patterns, and that is why we have this extended move up. We just simply need to wait until this wave is done, and then we have a move down, right? So we have this move down to complete this one, two, three, this one became truncated. Now, whenever price hits your low, that is generally where you wanna take some profits, okay? Price came down, back to the low, you wanna take some profits in this area. Especially when you see candles start to get small. You have candles coming from big to small. Once they close small, that means that volatility may be drying up. That is where you wanna to look to get out of the market, okay? And then the market shifts direction back to the upside giving you another impulse okay so this is where the volatility is coming into the market we did get some volatility up we did get some volatility down we did get some more volatility to the upside after that you can see that the volatility started to die off around 1 p.m eastern standard and it just kind of gets very very low um, goes into the European session, goes into the uh, Asian session until we get back to the European session, right? So as you can see, volatility came in and if we to go back to our economic calendar, let's see here. We have the ninth, which is Friday. On Fridays, we are going to always start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. It does not matter what we see on the economic calendar. Once it's not a interest rate decision, we're gonna start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard on Fridays, only Fridays. Fridays, we don't follow um, the, the times that the High Impact News is coming out. We simply start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. Why? Because Friday is a different type of day. I normally refer to Fridays as trap day. <laughs> That's when the market does really strange things, right? Normally, it changes from its current um, cycle to end of the week. So the next week, you get something completely different, okay? The market goes into correction, it starts to consolidate, it does strange moves, and whatever you expect it to happen from the previous week doesn't happen in the new week because the market makers are basically looking to uh, stop everyone out, okay? So you got to keep that in mind. So Fridays, we always start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. As you can see, we have a high impact news event coming out at 8.30, but we're still going to start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard and not 5 a.m. Eastern Standard, okay? So let's go to our chart. So we're looking for 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. Where is... So this is 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, right? So here you can see that this day, it was a little bit choppy. We didn't get much um, movement. It, every, the price action is very overlapping and uh, we didn't really get much volatility, okay? We did get some volatility coming in over here at eight where we have a nice push to the upside, okay? But typically we were looking at getting in at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard on a Friday. Once in a while, the market will be choppy. And why would it be choppy in a lot of cases, as you can see here, this is, this is sort of like an impulse. This is a corrective impulsive wave. So if you understand, this is one, two, this is wave three, this is four, this is five. So this is a corrective impulsive wave to the downside, right? Then we got one, which is W, X, Y, this is X, just make sure, yes, one, two, three, no. So this is one, and this is one, two, three, and then this is our next wave down, 
Okay, so this completed a bigger corrective formation that looks more like this. All right. So this is, some of you may look at this and say it's a wedge, right? So this created a wedge type formation and it took off back to the upside. So this is a big corrective formation of itself, right? So let's continue. What do we have in the following week? The Monday we had nothing. Whenever we have no high impact news event for the peers that we're trading, oh, did I? Yes, yeah, so, so on the Monday we have nothing, no high impact news events, right? So when we don't have any high impact news events, we can start trading at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. Okay, so Monday. Two a.m. There it is. Right. So if we start at two a.m., here you can see here is where the volatility came in. Right. Volatility came in not too long after to the upside. Now let's look at the next day. We have. April 13, we have a high impact news event coming in at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. So we are gonna start our day off at around 2 a.m. Eastern Standard looking for our setup, okay? Because this event came in before 8 a.m. Eastern Standard. There is also another high impact news event coming in at 8.30. And that's uh, pretty much it for that day, right? So the earliest high impact news event came in at five. So we're gonna start at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. So let's use good. So this is 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. And as you can see, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, the market does push up aggressively. We got this retest at the low and then price takes off again to the upside so the volatility started coming in around 2 a.m eastern standard so this puts us in the right position to get involved without having to deal with too much of the chop okay and if you were able to identify this pattern earlier you would have been able to see that this is potentially a wedge formation and you would have been able to catch this one to the upside once it hit the trend line Okay, so once the price came down and hits the trend line, that's where you'd want to buy it and catch the move to the upside. All right. Some of us we may want to put this like put this in like this. We may look at this and say that this is potentially a triangle formation. We have one, two, three, four, five upside. Okay. So it all depends on how you're drawing your patterns and how you look at your patterns. You may look at this as a triangle. You may look at this as a diagonal formation, which is a contracting, not diagonal, sorry, a wedge formation, which is a contracting wedge, okay? Or some may look at it and call it a pennant. So let's go back to our economic calendar. We're looking at Wednesday 14. Okay, so Wednesday 14, we have 10 a.m. Eastern Standard. We have nothing coming in before that. So we're starting off the day at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard, okay? We do have a high impact news event coming out at 12 p.m., but we have nothing coming out after from the U.S. or the Euro. So from the 14th, we're gonna be getting in at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. Okay, let's see here. All right, so this is 5 a.m. Eastern Standard. And as you can see, the volatility comes into the upside. This is the volatility to the upside. And we wanna get out of the market around 12 
p.m. Eastern Standard. We don't want to stay in too long, right? So this is where we want to get out, all right? Let us see here. We have the 15. We have 8.30, 8.30, 8.30. So everything came in at around 8.30. So we're looking to start at 5 p.m. East, sorry, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard as well. So let's see here. Good. So this is where the volatility came in. It looks like we're in some sort of big corrective formation here. So if we had plotted our high, in this case, we had marked our high. It would look something like this. And uh, around here would have been our low. We would not have been able to catch the low um, too early, but this would have been our low. And if you're looking at support, this would have been your support anyway, right? So this would have been your support level. And this also would have acted as our low, all right? So you can see here that we did get a move down to this support level. At that point, you'd have to exit your trade, maybe even go in the opposite direction. You can see the price did push up, it did push down. So it's in correction, okay? Now, let us see. We have the 16. 5 a.m. We have 8.30. 16th is Friday. It means we should be starting at 9. Sorry, we should be starting at uh, 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. So Okay, so 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, you can see that we still caught volatility to the upside. And we're looking to be done with this by 12 p.m. Eastern Standard, right? So if we hit our resistance, we would have been done at that point. But we wanna make sure that we are out of the trade completely by 12 p.m. Eastern Standard. And let's do, I think, our last example. Let's look at the 17th. Okay, the 18th and 19th. Okay, let's look at the 19th. On the 19th, we have nothing, right? So on the 19th, we're gonna be starting off at 2 a.m. Eastern Standard. So let's see, where's 2 a.m. Eastern Standard? right here All right so this is 2 a.m eastern standard over here all right just making sure good so this is 2 a.m eastern standard right here right and as you can see this is where the volatility was coming into the market it did come in a little bit early it did come in a little bit early on that day but as you can see, the rest of the move, very, very aggressive to the upside. If you're understanding your um, chart patterns, you would know that, okay, this is the area that you wanna look to get into the market, okay? Because you're looking to get in at around 2 a.m. So you, you should have been able to identify that volatility might be coming in before 2 a.m. If you're looking at this, you know, maybe um, a bit on the early side. So some of us look at our charts and look at our chart patterns and see how they develop and we prepare to take action at certain times. So around this time, you may be looking to get involved in the market, looking to see if it if this move to the downside stretches out into 2 a.m. Um, until it hits this support level. And whenever it hits this support level, you will look, you would be excited to get involved in the market because you're looking at this support level as something that's going to prop the price back to the upside, okay? And as you can see, we might have been able to catch this one to the upside. The move started already. You could have simply just jumped in and joined with the move to the upside, okay? 
the volatility is in. And this is a complete one, two, three wave corrective formation. So this would have been a lovely trick for you to get involved with, okay? All right, any other questions, any questions? Um, Sandra says, can this be used for indices? I prefer to use this on Forex, but it could be used in basically any market, okay? It could be used basically in any market. You just need to understand the market times. Can you set pending orders? If you understand your chart patterns or you understand support and resistance, yes, you can. This method is only to help you identify where the volatility is going to come so that you can come into the market at the right time, meaning you don't have to be in the market unnecessarily at 2 a.m. You can come in at five based on where the volatility is going to come or come in at eight because of where the volatility is going to come. So you don't have to be sitting up every single day from 2 a.m. Eastern Standard, or you don't have to be starting your day every day at eight or 9 a.m. Eastern Standard. Sometimes you're starting too late. And because you're starting the day too late, you're going to find yourself in situations where you're going to have drawdown because you're going to be trading inside of a correction and you don't want to be trading inside of a correction. It goes in your favor, it goes against you. It goes in your favor, it goes against you. You wanna be trading at a time when you're gonna be catching an impulse move, okay? Um, Grace says, do you have a chart um, for the time, like a cheat sheet? <laughs> uh, no, I've not created a chart with the times. Okay, it's, it's simply just knowing the session times, right? Just know the session times and everything will be good, All right? I'm going to see if I have something and uh, I'm going to paste it in um, one of the groups, okay? Wonderful, wonderful. All right, guys. Well, this will be it for this evening. Thank you so much for coming. It was a pleasure having you as usual. I'll let you guys go now. Bye-bye for now. Have yourselves a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. <laughs> You're most welcome. <laughs>